working with the Global Alliance for rabies control. Um, and Terence is going to speak about the rabies epidemiological bullet and how it works. Uh, and I believe um, use the Pan-African rabies control essentially as an example to demonstrate. Thank you, Terence. We're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you for that introduction. Um, so from the discussions this morning and um, this afternoon also, there's been a lot of talk about surveillance, about uh, reporting your human cases, reporting your animal cases, especially to the international organizations about tracking your, your vaccination campaigns, uh, looking at the number of animal cases, as well as transparency. So sharing this information with, with um, neighboring countries. We saw one example, um, I think it was the Ukraine, who said they have bilateral agreements with different countries because we know that rabies is a transboundary disease. But the key thing is that how do we do this? How do we gather this information? How do we use this information to our own benefit? And so we know that data collection is very difficult. And um, in a lot of countries, and I'm sure it's the same in a lot of countries in, in this region, we've seen it in Africa and Asia, data collection is extremely difficult. And a lot of s systems use paper-based systems and we collect all this information, but then you can't really do anything with that information. If I ask to, to find my patient record in that pile, I think it'll be extremely difficult to find that information. And we know that there's a problem with current data collection. Um, a lot of systems are paper-based systems and um, there's no sort of consistent uh, nomenclature or reporting means to, to collect this data. And again, as I mentioned, storing the data and analyzing this data. So to work through all of this information and try to figure out the total number of human cases, um, the total number of animal cases, that sort of information, is, which is what is needed, is difficult to elucidate from this and requires a lot of effort. And we've seen this coming through in a lot of publications also, that there's discrepancies in the reporting uh, Gregoria mentioned it earlier today also about how some of the information from the country reports were not the same as the, um, what was reported on the Wahis system. And we've seen this in another publication also, comparing this as an, an example from Africa, but the information is the same all around the world in all the rabies endemic countries. We see that the Wahis database, national databases, what's reported at meetings, so for instance, with these poster presentations, <laughs> that information is different. And these are reported from the same country, the information is different. And I don't think there's a single country here where the, the data matches across all the different platforms. And this is a, a, a really serious issue. Again, as Gregoria mentioned, it's something that stakeholders and investors need this information so that they can support the countries. We need this information to advocate for rabies control, um, for the control and elimination of rabies globally. Otherwise, if we don't have this information, how can we say that there's a problem? We can't say that there's a problem with rabies if, if we can't show that there's a problem with rabies. So in 2015, um, the Global Alliance for Rabies Control uh, devised a, a concept for a tool that can assist in this, and that is the tool that is based around the centralized database where countries then collect the information, report it to this database, and use this information for outputs with interactive surveillance maps, graphs, pivot tables, and other information from that. And similarly, to collect data from the ground, so from um, mobile phone applications or from um, the, the GAC data logger, as Andre presented earlier, and to then collect this all in a centralized database and have that aggregated and analyzed for, for the countries themselves. So what we've done is we've developed the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, and this is based on the open source DHIS2 platform. And currently we chose the DHIS2 system because it is being used in more than 60 countries already as a national health reporting system. And since, since um, its conception, we then developed it and launched it in June 2016 in Africa. 
and it is available in various different languages. So it's available in French, uh, Arabic, um, I saw it is in Russian, it's in English. Uh, there are a variety of different languages that the, the database and the bulletin is available in. So it is applicable to various different countries and is available uh, for, for almost everyone here from what I understand. So just looking at a, a brief overview of the system itself is a lot of systems are based primarily only on national data, uh, data reporting and national data capture. But the bulletin itself includes sub-national data collection so that includes information from vaccinators and community health workers, as well as health facilities on the ground. Um, the presentation by Morocco mentioned that they had, I think it was 263 health facilities, bite treatment centers around the, uh, around the country. Um, and this system can then help to collect that information, aggregate it to the, to the national level, and then share this information, create maps, create graphs and other information using this data that's collected at the individual facilities. That data is then reported up to the national level. And again, as was mentioned earlier, is having this regional data collection, the, the transparency of the, of, of the disease and the transboundary nature of the disease means that we need to share this information with our bordering countries as well as international stakeholders. And then again, touching on what Gregoria mentioned about international reporting, the obligation of countries to report this data to the OIE. The WHO um, Global Health Observatory also requires this data to then assist with um, intervention. So one of the key aspects about the system that we've developed is that it is a tool for countries to use. It's not a system for, for GARC to collect the data and the data belongs to the country. It does not belong to GARC or to anyone else it belongs solely to the country. It is their um, right to then grant us permission to then share the data or make it publicly available. But that is up to the country to then give us permission to share the data. So as I mentioned here, countries must provide permission, written permission to share their data publicly, um, either on the websites or to the, the OIE or to the WHO uh, or to anyone else. So just to reiterate, this is a tool for the countries to use. It's not a database for us to collect the data. So I'm just going to uh, touch on the, the various aspects and some of the uh, examples that we've developed for the different levels of reporting. So looking at subnational data collection, I have a short video here. Um, and this is uh, for by treatment centers in countries. So when a patient enters the, cl the clinic, they can be registered on the system. Information about their exposure can be recorded. And again, this data can then be aggregated and collected, sent to the national level automatically. Oh, sorry. Um. It's not available. Okay. I don't think the video is even play. It's not okay. Okay. No, it's not <coughs> okay, so the, the video is not working, but I can show you um, during the next session we have a, a workshop on the on the bulletin itself, so I can show you that uh, live if 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 you are interested in this. But this system essentially collects the patient data at the clinic, records it all automatically on the system, and then um, records the uh, vital information about the exposure, including uh, the dose of vaccine provided. It automatically then schedules the next visit. So depending on the, the regimen, the vaccine regimen that you're using, it can then send automatic notifications to the patient themselves to remind them to come back to the clinic. And again, mentioning from some of the posters, we saw this morning that uh, patient dropouts is a problem in many countries. <laughs> and some patients, um, I can't remember the example, but they mentioned that there was a case of human rabies where somebody died because they didn't receive the treatment because the owner said the animal was vaccinated. 
This can then help with that system to remind the patient to come back to the clinic to receive their last um, dose of vaccine and ensure that they are protected. Um, again, it's a web-based program, so the, the system can be used anywhere, uh, wherever there is internet connection. Um, data can be stored offline temporarily if the internet connection is poor, and then when the internet connection is, is um, good again, it can then be automatically uploaded to the database. And it can be scaled down to be used on a, on a mobile phone also. So it's primarily used on, on computers, but can also be used on mobile phones. Um, Andre spoke briefly about, about the GARC data logger and how it's been integrated into the bulletin. So this is just an example from another country. And the, the key with this is that um, you're collecting this information on the ground and we've made it as simple as possible to upload that information. It's one or two clicks of a button, you upload the data, and the key thing is that the maps are automatically drawn and updated for you. So you don't need technical expertise, you don't need knowledge in GIS or data analysis or anything like that. This is all done automatically for you by the system itself. So looking at national data, uh, data reporting, this is um, primarily what we focus on initially within countries, and that is simply just to collect the data at the national level um, and to also make this publicly available. So let's hope this video works. This is just an example of um, the countries that have allowed their data to be shared. Um, this is an example from the Paracon network in Africa, and you can see that you can go onto the GARC website and you can look, and the countries in blue here are those that have provided permission. This is a relatively old video and some new, uh, more countries have prov provided permission. You can then click on the country itself and it then loads various graphs about the data for that country. So again, this is touching on the transparency aspects, looking at your neighbors, looking at the, um, what is being done in the various countries. The graphs and the maps are all interactive. <laughs> Um, so you can click on the different things and get different information from the graphs um, and you can look at the maps at the specific cases all around the countries also. And again, only the aggregated data will be shared here, so it will only be maps and graphs. Um, there won't be any raw data that is shared. Um, so you maintain the data privacy also. So looking at then the regional data collection, um, again, what I keep on touching on is the, the key to, um, have, to working together is to have this transparency. And we know that rabies is a transboundary disease. It doesn't care about political borders. And therefore, we need to have this transparency, be able to work with our neighbors. Um, one of the things that we, we are currently finalizing at the moment, and it's been a, a great project. We've been working with um, Dr. Knopf and the WHO team and that is to have automated reporting to the international organizations. We're in uh, discussions with um, Dr. Torres, also with the OIE, to also try to in include this with the Wahis Plus um, database. And this is um, so that it eases the reporting burden on countries. So again, as, as Gregorio mentioned um, earlier, um, the data is not being reflected on the Wahis Plus system and therefore um, we need to improve this reporting. And one of the ways in which we're working towards this is by having um, the countries that are using the, the rabies epidemiological bulletin tool that are then able to automatically share the data with um, the WHO and, and hopefully with the OIE and other international organizations who are interested um, through the click of one or two buttons also. So it eases that burden on data reporters and the people responsible for reporting this data. Um, we know that they are busy, there are lots of diseases that need data to be reported. And if we can make this as simple as possible for rabies, then we can have this data available um, for, for everyone to then view and share. So one of the things we do is um, we encourage the countries to share um, their data and sign the data permission sharing form so that we can have this transparency. Um, looking at, an, at another example, and this is touching on um, the transparency, and this is an example from East Africa where several countries have provided permission to share their data. So on the system itself, they can log on 
and view this sorry this joint dashboard <coughs> where it shows comparative information from each of the different countries so looking at different information different graphs looking at that across the different countries and again countries for the entire pan-african rabies control network um, who've provided permissions you can then compare the information across all of the different countries so you can see the number of um, recorded bite cases the animal rabies cases human rabies cases across all the different countries in the whole of africa and similar uh, similar can be done for um, the countries in the MIRIB network also. Again, just touching on the international reporting aspects, we've worked hard, as I mentioned with the WHO, to standardize some of the indicators. So the information that is being requested on the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin that is available for the countries is the same information that is required by the WHO for the Global Health Observatory. So therefore, we're asking the same questions um, we're gathering the same information. You don't then need to um, try adapt your data to then make it applicable to the, the WHO, who are asking different data from, um, from GARC, who are asking different data from the RE. We're working hard to standardize this information so that we're all collecting the same information to make it as easy as possible for the countries themselves. And essentially, um, what's important about the standardized indicators is that these are essential indicators that countries require to be able to effectively um, analyze their, their rabies control efforts and to see um, whether their efforts are, are working or not. So it's essential information that is required already <laughs> for the countries themselves to assess their control initiatives, but then it is also the same information that is then required for the international organizations. And touching on the automated sharing of that data, this is the app within the, the DHIS, within the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin system. And you can see it's a simple one or two clicks of a button, and you can then share that data with the WHO. So just in summary, this tool that, that has been developed by GARC touches on sub-national data collection, including the GDL that's, that Andre presented on, including collecting data from healthcare facilities. It touches on national data reporting, so aggregating and collecting all that information across the different sectors and having it available for your policymakers and stakeholders within the country. Regional data collection, sharing with the stakeholders, sharing with um, neighboring countries, and then international reporting, uh, your, your mandatory reporting to the IE. As well as, uh, as well as your reporting to the WHO and other international organizations. And why we need the data is because we need to make a statement with data. We know that we need to improve advocacy of, about, of rabies, um, in, make uh, our stakeholders and um, permanent secretaries aware of the situations so that we can get funding to control the disease. and. Quite an interesting thing um, that I observed from the presentations this morning is that um, a lot of countries were reporting the human rabies cases. And what we saw is that I was doing comparisons with the, the Hampson study from the global estimates of rabies. Um, and a lot of the data that was reported was actually more than those estimates predicted, or they were on par with those estimates. And now that's extremely powerful information that we can then use to say, well, we had these estimates, we actually see that the situation is worse than this, and therefore we really need your support. We need the investment from um, the governments, from the permanent secretaries, to then intervene and control this disease, which is 100% preventable. And I know I just mentioned a, an example from, from the posters this morning, but we've also seen that um, in Africa, we've seen an example where they were reporting 38 human cases. The estimates predicted that there were about 523. And then after using the system and improving their reporting and surveillance, they actually showed that the number of human rabies cases was actually more than what the estimates predicted. And again, as I mentioned, this is powerful data that can be used to make the case for rabies in your country. So the idea is to make data collection analysis as easy as possible. We want to make it easy. 
um, and we wanted to make it simple and effective for countries so that it is possible so that they can really show their progress also. Not only what needs to be done, but what they have done already. And so um, I think it's after lunch we'll have a short workshop. I'll introduce you to the tool and we can go through it all together. Uh, log on to the system. Um, it's already uh, ready for all the different countries to input their data if they so wish. Um, and we know you have some of the data from your posters. That data can then be entered onto the system and you can then see how the system works and hopefully take this home to your own countries also to be used as, as a surveillance system for your own countries. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much, uh, Terence. Does that? Uh,